Welcome everyone to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Uh, we have a great lineup of colleges that you will hear from in just a moment, but I'm going to kick us off with some housekeeping items. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Feel free to direct them specifically to an institution um, or ask one generally and they will respond to you via the Q&A. Your camera and microphone are off, as you can see, um, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, which is why that Q&A button is so important to interact with them throughout the session. Um, this is uh, the last session for tonight, um, so all of these sessions will be recorded and will be posted um, to the website within about a week or so for you to view in an on-demand setting uh, later. So without further ado, I am going to invite our first institution up, uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Tyler, take it away. Perfect, thank you. Let me just share my screen quickly. Um, so welcome everyone. My name is Tyler Gibbs. I am a, a senior admissions uh, counselor at WPI. Um, we're Worcester Polytechnic Institute located in Massachusetts. Um, we're right in the middle of the state about 50 minutes west of the city of Boston. WPI itself is a STEM institution. So all our programs involve science, technology, engineering, and math. We have 12 different types of engineering. We have game design, computer science, biology, physics, chemistry, business, a whole slew of different things you can pursue here. Uh, we have about 4,500 undergraduate students, about 2,000 grad level students. So I like to say that WPI is right between a small and a medium sized institution. We have over 50 different majors. Um, and then it's important to note when you apply to WPI, you just apply to WPI. You don't apply to a specific program. So because of that, once you get on campus, it's very easy to switch majors. Um, and then we do have a 95% freshman to sophomore retention rate. And this is something we're very proud of. So that means 95% of the first year students who start at WPI return for their sophomore year. But I want, what I wanna spend my uh, short time talking about today is this thing called the WPI plan. This was a plan created about 50 years ago um, by administration at the time because they wanted to reinvent the way we delivered our education. And so there are four distinct uh, parts of this plan. The first is our academic calendar. So our calendar, academic calendar um, is actually divided into four terms. Each term is only seven weeks long and students only take three classes a term. You cover the exact same material in those three courses in a seven week span as you would in those courses in a 15 week semester. So yes, it's definitely a faster paced work environment because over seven weeks, you're gonna do a midterm and a final and then close the door on um, one of your classes. And then after a little bit of a break, you'll start another fresh set of three courses. So it is definitely a faster pace, but the great thing about this structure is you get to go through courses a lot quicker. So you get to go through those entry-level classes and dive into your major specific courses um, a lot faster than you might at other institutions. Um, but also great thing about this are the breaks. So between A and B term, students have 10 days off in the middle of October. Between B and C term, students have a month off in the middle of uh, December to January. Then between C and D term, students have 10 days off um, at, in the middle of March for their spring break. The second part of our WPI plan is the way we do grading. So at WPI, you can actually only receive one of four grades. Um, you can get an A, you get a B, you can get a C, or something we call the no record, which we refer to as an NR. And basically what an NR is, is if you're not grasping the material in the course, meaning you're gonna get below a C, so a D or an F, instead of receiving a D or an F on your transcript, you'll actually receive an NR. Now the NR doesn't show up on your transcript, doesn't affect your GPA, it's as if you never took the course before. When we do this one, to help you the transition to college because we don't want to punish you if you're struggling during your first year at WPI. But also on the flip side, we want to encourage you to take courses outside your comfort zone. Take classes out of your area of study. Take a higher level course. And if for some reason that risk doesn't pan out for you, you can fall back on that NR and it won't affect the GPA you work so hard to build up. The third part of our uh, curriculum our, of the WPI plan is our flexible curriculum. So at WPI, we like to say there's no one right way to be an engineer or a mathematician or a scientist. So instead of, you give, instead of us giving you a list of all the courses you have to take in order to graduate with say your mechanical engineering degree, we'll actually give you a list of categories of courses you need to fulfill. And then within each category, you might have to do anywhere from two to seven courses. You'll actually have a list larger than that to choose from to really mold your degree into what you want it to be. So one, you're taking classes that actually interest you, and you're taking classes that you think are gonna best prepare you for whatever it is you want to do after you graduate from WPI. Now, the fourth part of the WPI plan, the part that really makes WPI WPI is our project-based learning. 
At WPI, in almost every single one of your courses, you'll be doing some type of project-based work. And oftentimes these projects are team oriented. And then in, in addition to these individual course projects, you will be required to complete a couple of large scale projects in order to graduate. On this screen, I'll highlight just two of them, just given the time. The first is the IQP, the interactive qualifying project there in the bottom left-hand corner. The IQP is a, a junior year project. Students complete it um, over an entire term um, in a team of three to four WPI students. It's interdisciplinary, meaning that you're gonna work in a team of students with different majors than your own. And you're tasked with solving a social, social science-based problem um, using your STEM background. The second project is the MQP, the major qualifying project. This is completed your senior year. You can kind of think of this project like your senior capstone, your senior thesis. This is a major specific project. So you will be working on this project with students with similar or like majors of your own, um, but you get to choose what the project is. So a lot of students um, tend to look forward to this for their senior year because it's usually directly relates to what it is they want to do after they graduate. But diving back to that junior year project, the IQP, that's actually when a lot of our students choose to study abroad at WPI. Over 80% of students will actually travel abroad to complete that junior year project. And they'll, what they'll do is they'll travel to one of our 50 different project centers all over the world. You can see the map here. And when they go abroad, they go abroad and they're working with a business or an organization in the local area to work on their junior year project. They're not taking classes. They're solely working on this graduation requirement. So it's incredibly easy for every student, regardless of major, to study abroad at WPI because they're simply creating something or, or completing something they have to complete in order to graduate. Another cool thing about our abroad program is every accepted student is awarded up to a $5,000 global stipend to help alleviate the cost of studying abroad. And these projects will be starting up um, rather soon um, with everything starting to improve after the, the COVID pandemic. So we're really excited for those projects to kick back up. But that's all I have for everybody. I invite you to check out, uh, we have virtual tours, virtual info sessions right now, but we're also starting visits on campus starting um, this coming Wednesday, the, the 26th, I believe. So if you're gonna find yourself up here in the Northeast, check us out uh, for a campus tour. We do in five days a week, including some Saturdays. Awesome, great info, Tyler, thanks so much. And next I will invite Sarah up with University of Mary Washington, take it away. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Let me share my screen real quick. Hold on. It's giving me some trouble. <laughs> of course, you would think after all of this time doing Zoom, I would be able to get it on there real quickly, but still struggle with it. All right, here we go. Hopefully everybody can see that. I'm Sarah Lindbergh. I'm the Associate Director for Admissions at the University of Mary Washington. I'm um, proud class of 2008 alumna. I'm excited to share a little bit about our um, public liberal arts and sciences university with you today. We are located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So we are a public institution in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We are located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So we're about um, 50 miles south of Washington, DC and 50 miles north of Richmond, Virginia right in the heart of the state off of I-95. You have a beautiful suburban campus at Mary Washington um, that I believe is top notch and none to be matched by any others. Um, that's very much like a park, lots of green spaces. We're just situated um, about a 10 minute walk out of downtown historic Fredericksburg. So there's lots of history um, in our area, but at the same time, you still have access to those two, metro two major metropolitan cities at the same time. So you can go into Washington, DC, or you can go down into Richmond. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when I talk about our internship opportunities. We are considered a small state institution with just about 4,200 undergraduate students. The emphasis on curriculum at Mary Washington is for undergrads. So we do have a population of graduate students, but the focus of our faculty is on those undergrads and really shaping where our students are gonna be after they complete um, their bachelor's degree and really challenging them um, throughout their programs. So what can you expect in the classroom? Our average class size is about 19. Um, the student faculty ratio is 13 to one. We have over 60 different majors, minors, and programs students can choose from. As a liberal arts and sciences university, all of our students come in undeclared uh, with the exception of students that would like to pursue our pre-nursing program. That is the only program you have to apply to in the application process. Our largest um, majors based on students studying in those programs are business administration, biology, psychology, history, and English. Education is up there. We were established as a school um, for education and teaching teachers is really truly at our heart. We boast the number one historic preservation program in the country at the undergraduate level. You can see Laura there um, participating in an archaeological dig. 
you will see a number of other burgeoning programs at Mary Washington. Our computer science program um, has 100% placement rate um, prior to graduation for either graduate school or job placement. Communication and digital studies is a program that is quickly growing leaps and bounds with lots of students going into careers in social media marketing, um, but in other communication avenues as well as we move more towards a digital world that we're in. Because we are a smaller institution, we are able to devote research opportunities to our undergraduate students. And last year, we devoted about $275,000 to that. Um, we have students that have been offered Fulbright opportunities around the globe to pursue after they graduate. And you truly have professors at Mary Washington who get to know you because they are in the classrooms with you, um, teaching you throughout your experiences at Mary Washington. Outside of the classroom, you have a lot of activities as well. Um, we are Division Three for our varsity athletics. We are a part of the Coast to Coast Conference that includes some East Coast teams, but also teams across the country. Um, so we're pretty excited about the move to the Coast to Coast Conference for our 21 varsity sports that we offer at Mary Wash. Um, we have over 150 clubs and organizations. You'll see a lot of fun activities um, like Devil Goat Day that's there with our students in the red shirt. And then, believe it or not, in the top right, you see um, President Pano, our university president, who's participating in the big slide event that happens every Labor Day weekend in the Fredericksburg area. And it's an opportunity to take a big water slide down, um, down the hill on Hanover Street, which is right by the president's house and our alumni executive center, which is pretty cool. We do have about one third of our students that will study abroad in their time at Mary Washington. We offer 157 programs and 54 foreign countries. We are super excited for our students to start to be able to study abroad beginning in the fall semester. Again, um, those can be faculty-led opportunities over break periods or a full semester abroad. Uh, it's really up to you and what you would like to pursue in terms of a study abroad experience. We do like our students to get those experiences outside of the classroom with internships in DC or Richmond through study abroad, um, or maybe it's through that research opportunity that you could have as well. We, um, you'll see there are um, application filing dates as well as our admitted student profile. We do have a um, separate honors program and admission for those students with um, a average weighted GPA of about a 4.25 for that. We are completely test optional, so please, um, you can disregard those test scores. All students are reviewed for a merit-based scholarship that ranges between one and $10,000 per year simply by applying to our university. If you want more information, follow us on social media. I'll also drop my email in the chat for you, as well as our new admissions Instagram handle, which is at Mary Wash Admissions. And we are doing campus visits right now. So I'll put that link there too. Thanks so much. Awesome job, Sarah. Thanks so much. Up next, Allison with Mary Baldwin University will share information about her institution. Hi, good evening, everybody. Let me pull all of this stuff up really quick. Um, like Jen said, my name is Alice McIntyre. I'm an admissions counselor here at Mary Baldwin. And I wanted to start off with what's really important to us at MBU, and that's our students. Um, our goal is to, um, oh, let me make sure I share the screen. Let's see, hopefully you guys can see that now. <laughs> um, so our goal is to help you find your fit. And Michaela is a student who found hers here. And what she has to say about us is that she dealt with a lot of insecurity in middle school and high school and was content to hide in the background of every class. Coming to MBU where some of her classes only um, had about 12 people meant that she was given the chance to speak up and feel comfortable sharing her thoughts among the class filled, filled with her peers. If you're looking for a school that will make you as an individual feels special, then MBU is the place for you. Uh, Mary Baldwin is located one block away from downtown Stanton, which is voted one of the top 20 best small towns in America, as well as one of America's best main streets. MBU is one of the most ethically diverse campuses. Our class of 2022 is 58% students of color, and our campus is represented by students from 39 states and six different countries. By putting our students first, Mary Baldwin wants to take what you learn in the class and apply it to the real world. We have a wonderful academic op opportunities from the moment that you step foot on campus. Students are able to complete internships starting their freshman year and students um, their senior year, they all complete a senior capstone 
Um, and we have many different leadership opportunities on campus available to everyone. Um, we also have over 50 clubs and organizations as well as Division Three athletics. MBU offers over 50 majors and minors as well as 11 graduate degree programs. We have uh, roughly 1,000 undergraduate students, an average class size of 17 with an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. With class sizes this small, our goal is to make sure that you're a great fit for the university while finding your calling while you're here. We are proud to offer four very distinctive programs for women at MBU. The first one is our College for Women, which is a unique program available exclusively to young women. Even though we are a co-ed university, this is a women-centered women program that builds students' strengths and develops leadership skills. Another great opportunity we have at MBU is our VWIL program. VWIL stands for Virginia Women's Institute for Leadership um, and is the nation's only all-female cadet corps in the country. Um, this program builds leadership skills as well as prepares students to enter the military upon graduation as an officer if they choose to serve. Uh, the third program is our program for the exceptionally gifted, which is a unique program for girls as young as 13 who are looking to attend college early. Um, it is a highly selective program that allows these young women to earn a four year degree. Uh, the fourth program is, an, is Ida B. Wells, which is a community for women of African descent who wants to explore culture, identity, leadership and civic engagement. Um, so I know, I know I've done a ton of talking and hopefully I've gotten you interested to hear about next steps. Our applications are open. Um, you're able to apply directly through our website or the Common app. Um, it's always free to apply to MBU. And once we receive your application, you can expect to hear a decision back within two weeks. Uh, the typical MBU student has mostly A's and B's on their transcript. And this year we are test optional. Um, our goal at MBU is to provide you with an affordable private university education. All students who are accepted um, receive merit-based scholarships based on their GPA. This year, our merit scholarships range from $16,000 to $22,000. You'll receive this amount every year for all four years, and 95% of our students receive financial aid and scholarships. The financial aid packages are sent out as soon as um, early November. Um, again, thank you so much for attending the session. Um, here is my contact information on the slide, um, but I can put in um, some um, links to stuff because we do have tours open, um, but feel free to contact me. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. And I will invite Chase up with Virginia Military Institute. Take it away, Chase. All right. Hey everyone, my name is Chase Perry. I'm the um, Assistant Director of Admissions here at VMI. Um, VMI, we're um, the oldest state-supported military college in the United States, founded in 1839, um, one of six senior military colleges in the United States, uh, located in Lexington, Virginia, so um, just south um, of, of San Virginia, where Mary Baldwin was um, located there. Um, again, 1,700 students were a state-supported military college all of our students do participate in our Corps of Cadets, so they're wearing a uniform every day um, and participating in that military program. Whether they're planning on commissioning or not, and commissioning is optional. Um, we do commission about 50 to 55% of our students each year that graduate are going into the military. Um, we do offer all four ROTC branches, Army, Navy, Marine, and Air Force, and we also have um, some folks in the Air Force Department that are actually starting the process of possibly commissioning into the Space Force um, within the next couple of years. So that is one, um, one thing. What you can expect from BMI um, is to live a Spartan lifestyle, um, structured, disciplined, um, program designed to instill lifelong traits of integrity, devotion to duty, self-discipline, and self-reliance. Um, so you're not just going to class. You're not just participating in the academic department. There are so many other challenges, both physical um, and on the mil military side, here at BMI, especially the first year. So that means we're going to be looking for physically fit, honorable young men and women who are leaders in their school and local community. So we're looking for folks that are balancing extracurriculars with the academic success um, because we're going to keep you busy when we get you here. So um, if you're already building those time management and leadership skills through clubs, athletics, um, those are the type of students that we see are able to come here and able to succeed, um, especially the first year. 
Um, ROTC at VMI, I mentioned we do have all four branches. Um, but we also have an option for folks to direct commission into the Coast Guard through our Navy Department. Um, commissioning is optional. And then again, ROTC scholarships are available. Um, if you are planning on commissioning in the military, I really urge you to apply for an ROTC scholarship coming into your, between your junior and senior year of high school. Um, you can apply for three of those. You can apply for the Army, Air Force, and you choose um, Navy or Marine. And we, uh, we urge you that if you're not dead set on a particular branch, then explore those options and, and, and to um, apply for those scholarships because those can be very helpful um, in, in helping with, you know, supplement the cost of a, of a school. Um, mentioned the military. Um, that's what sets us apart from other schools. kind of gets lost literally in the shadows of, of the military, but we also have um, a very strong academic program. Um, our size and what it allows us to do academically, we only have 1,700 students, so 10 to 1 student teacher ratio. Um, professors know who you are, know what you're doing, really vested um, in you and your success. A lot of them double as tack officers in barracks, they coach club sports, somehow involved in cadets lives outside the classroom as well. It really helps build that small, tight-knit community type feel that I think all schools have. Um, but I think we're really magnified here in the fact that we have the, the small academic side along with everyone participating in the military um, program together as well. Um, you see we only have 14 majors. We don't get overly specific. I will urge you if you don't see a major um, here that you that you think is what you want to um, want to do or, or your career path, I really urge you to look more into our minors and concentrations. We have a large number of those. Um, they've almost tripled in the past 10 years. So international studies and politics, for example, has a national security minor that's become very popular with folks that are looking at either commissioning or serving maybe through the intelligence community, FBI, CIA, or federal level law enforcement, things like that. Our computer and information science department just rolled out a cybersecurity minor this year that's going to be very popular. Um, so different things like that that you may not see a cybersecurity or you may not see a um, you know, national security type thing within these 14 majors, but we get you a little more specific through minors and concentrations. Once you get in, once you get your foot in the door and figure out that that's exactly what you want to do. Um, admissions, we, um, we open up our admissions on August 1 of the senior year. There's, we have an early decision and a regular decision process. Um, again, there's what we look for, but we will also, um, I'll stick, note that we are going to be test optional again for this next year. Um, average GPA is a 3536. Again, we're looking for that well-rounded, well, um, well-rounded student that's going to be able to handle all the other um, things as well as the academic side here. Financial aid, a rate of receive some form of financial aid, um, 56% received need-based aid. Around a third of our students are on ROTC scholarships with 17% receiving athletic scholarships. We are Division I athletics. Um, participate in the Southern Conference and are the reigning Southern Conference champions in football. So we've not been able to say that since 1982. So that's probably the first time that's been said on an admissions Zoom call. I can guarantee that. So, um, and to wrap that up, we are doing um, in-person interviews. Um, you can come see our campus throughout the summer and we're planning on having our, um, a full open house program and schedule in the fall as we get that scheduled. Um, so with that, I'll um, hand it back over. All right, thank you so much, Chase. And up next is Mariah with Rochester Institute of Technology. All righty, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining our session. My name is Mariah McLean Giardino. I'm Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Rochester Institute of Technology, or RIT. Uh, so I am the admissions representative for all students in DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Uh, really looking forward to working with you throughout the application process. Uh, so diving right in, uh, the main RIT campus is located in a suburb just a few minutes outside of Rochester, uh, and that's going to be the third largest city in New York State. Uh, we actually have overseas satellite campuses of RIT. Those are in Croatia, Dubai, Kosovo, and China. 
Uh, but our main campus in Rochester is home to uh, over 16,000 students. That does make us one of the largest private universities in the country. Uh, students are coming to us from all 50 states and about 90 different countries. We've got more than 2,600 international students, uh, also 2,000 students identifying as African American. Latin American and or Native American. Uh, something unique about us is that we are home to the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, uh, which includes about a thousand students who are either deaf, deaf or hard of hearing. Um, even though RIT is considered a larger school, the average class size is just 22 students and the uh, student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one. Uh, RIT is home to nine academic colleges. We offer close to 90 different majors. Uh, some are definitely in the areas that you would expect from a tech school, uh, such as engineering, science, computing, game design, health sciences, and engineering technology. Uh, we also have programs in the non-STEM fields as well that might surprise you. Uh, so things like art, design, film and animation, photography, uh, business and liberal arts fields. So it's a nice variety of the both STEM and non-STEM programs. Um, you can do creation of different majors and minors. You could also get an accelerated dual degree program uh, in about 40 different areas of study. Want to talk about uh, experiential learning. This is a really important part of RIT's education style. Uh, experiential learning can take a lot of different forms like research, study abroad, uh, clinical rotations and internships. RIT is going to be best known though for our cooperative education program, uh, which is called co-op for short. If you have not heard of the term co-op before, just think of it like a form of internship. Uh, often internships are part-time or unpaid. The big difference is that co-ops will always be full-time paid professional work experiences. Uh, so RIT has one of the oldest and largest co-op programs in the world. So over 3,400 employment partners in all 50 states and about 30 countries. 80% uh, of the majors on our campus require co-ops. Uh, for majors that don't, co-ops are still going to be strongly encouraged. Uh, and then one important thing I just want to point out about co-op, you are not charged tuition by RIT during your co-op experiences. Uh, so you're actually paid by an employer and that money is yours to keep. Uh, you can learn more about co-ops at the site joboutlook.rit.edu. Uh, moving on to campus life, uh, we have more than 330 active clubs, clubs on campus. Uh, we host hundreds of student events and festivals on campus each year, um, and we do have prevalent Greek life. It's about 10% of the student body involved in sororities and fraternities. As far as varsity sports, we are the proud home of 24 varsity teams, including Division I uh, men and women's ice hockey. And then if you wanna participate in sports, but just not varsity, there's plenty of other club, intramural and recreational sports to offer. Uh, right now it's about a third of the student body that participates in some sort of intramural activity. Uh, one thing that we are looking to enhance is our performing arts offerings. So we have about a thousand RIT students participating in the performing arts each year. Uh, we also offer performing arts scholarships now to incoming first year students. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up my time with uh, just some information about the admission process, financial aid, and visiting campus. Um, at RIT, it's really important to know that we review students for admission uh, based on their intended major. So that's a practice called differential admissions. Uh, we just want to make sure that you are a good fit for the program that most interests you. Um, so for example, what we're looking for from a STEM candidate uh, to bring to the table will ultimately be very different from what we're looking for in our non-STEM candidates for admission. You are able to list up to three academic programs on your application. So if we can't admit you to choice one, we could then review you for admission to choice two and if necessary, choice three. Uh, we also offer both early decision and regular decision options, but we do not offer early action. Just point out here, the numbers on the right represent the middle 50% ranges of GPAs, SAT and ACT uh, for the students who were admitted to RIT last year. Uh, the ranges can vary significantly by major, so I'll type a link in the chat shortly with our profile. And I do want to point out that we did decide to go test optional, so totally your choice whether or not to submit test scores. Uh, briefly, touching on financial aid and scholarships, um, need-based aid is available, so you have to submit the FAFSA
FAFSA if you'd like to be um, considered for need-based aid. And then we also commit, consider students for various merit-based scholarships. Uh, and students can also apply for specialized scholarships like the ones that are offered on this slide. Uh, and then finally, just want to share my contact information with you. You're welcome to sign up on our website for virtual sessions. Uh, we do have a virtual workshop based program called College and Careers, uh, which is going to give you a chance to learn more about our academic programs. Uh, we are also open for in person campus tours. So hopefully you'll be able to visit our campus soon. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Great. Thanks, Mariah. Our next and final institution before we move on to live Q&A is Mario with Virginia Tech. In this out for us, Mario. <laughs> All right, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so my name is Mario Cruz. I'm one of the assistant directors for the Office of Undergraduate Admissions here at Virginia Tech. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit more about our academics, what we offer outside the classroom, and last but not least, our admissions process. To get started, Virginia Tech is located in beautiful Blacksburg, Virginia. We are a traditional college town, meaning that anywhere that you go within campus or even the region itself, people live and breathe by those colors, the Chicago maroon and that burnt orange. Overall, we have about 30,000 undergraduate students and with including graduate and international students. Our campus looks more so around 36,000 students overall. So Virginia Tech um, and being part of the Hokie Nation, we wanna make sure that students are able to be successful outside the classroom. And that's why we offer everything from internships to co-op opportunities to study abroad opportunities. And of course, um, undergraduate research, which is something that you can get involved in as early as your freshman year at Virginia Tech. We do also have over 900 different clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. Everything from your traditional student government to Greek life organizations, to also intramural sports, club sports, and division one varsity sports. Uh, we are also highly ranked when it comes to the best college food in America, consistently being ranked within the top three in the past few years. Uh, so definitely, you know, we do have a lot to offer for our students in regards to that support system outside the classroom. When it comes to the academics, we offer over 110 different majors across eight different colleges. Um, keep in mind that when it comes to Virginia Tech, we are going to be reviewing your application based on the major that you select. So major plays a huge role in our admissions process. And you can only apply to one specific program and that application based on uh, what program you apply to will determine your admissions for, that, uh, for, for Virginia Tech overall. So how do you apply to Virginia Tech? Um, you are more than welcome to apply via the coalition or the common app. We truly don't have a preference over one or the other. It's up to you to decide which one you feel most comfortable with. At Virginia Tech, we strive to have a holistic review, meaning that we look at both the academics and the personal side. And when it comes to the academics, the main thing that we're looking for is academic rigor. So seeing what type of classes you have taken from 9 to 12th grade, and then also seeing the final letter grades that you have received from nine to 11th grade. That's the main thing that we're looking for. Everything will be self-reported, meaning that we do not require an official high school transcript to be sent to us. Uh, we will only require it for those official documents once you have officially accepted your offer to Virginia Tech. And we are also test optional for this upcoming year, 2021-2022 cycle. When it comes to the personal side, uh, we are going to be asking students to complete four short personal statements um, when it comes to our application. Both the coalition and the common app have their own essay. However, they do not play a role in our admissions process. We're only going to be looking at those responses that you provide to this four short personal statements. We'll be asking you questions regarding some core values that we hold at Virginia Tech re regarding service, resilience, and leadership. Each of these statements should be no longer than 120 words max each. When it comes to our deadlines, we offer three different deadlines at Virginia Tech. We do offer early decision, early action, and regular decision. However, we strongly encourage all applicants to apply to either our early decision uh, application deadline, which is binding, or apply to our early action um, deadline, which is non-binding. Due to the fact that if you were to apply a regular decision, it is basic we have any space available in your major. 
We do offer scholarships and financial aid averaging a check. Keep in mind that all students will have to complete a general scholarship application in order to be considered for financial aid or merit-based scholarships. That application deadline is separate from the admissions application being um, the deadline being January 22nd of your senior year. And last but not least, why Virginia Tech could be a good option for you. We do have a higher graduation rate than the national average, standing at 83% versus a 49%. 82% of our undergraduate students are either employed or pursuing further education within a six month period after graduation. The average starting salary for a recent BT alum stands around 60 grand a year. And last but not least, we do have a very high retention rate when it comes to our first year students, standing at 93%. And just to end it all up, uh, feel free to follow us on our social media. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for taking us home, Mario. I'll have you stay on and I'll invite all of the other reps to uh, turn their cameras back on. Uh, to the audience, feel free to uh, continue to submit your questions. We will be sure that every rep has the transcript of questions here in case for their follow-up needs to be done uh, in case all questions were answered. But this next time, I just want to fill with some uh, questions that I think will be fun for the audience to hear when it comes to maybe more campus life stuff and the college search process. Um, so the first question that I'd like to ask all of the reps and um, feel free to answer in the order that you presented was um, just give us a fun or interesting fun fact about your school. Um, so if you would like to kick us off, that would be great. I'm assuming I'm first. So yep, Tyler. <laughs> uh, perfect. Sorry. Uh, interesting or fun facts. So WPI's mascot's a goat. Uh, it's a long history. I encourage you to check it out. But we're one of two schools in the country that has the mascot as a goat. We also have three secret societies on campus. So I'll let you explore that on your own time. So two of my favorite fun facts is that most people think that um, they get it wrong and that Mary Washington is George Washington's wife. Actually, Mary Washington is George Washington's mother. We are named for our founding father's mother who resided in the greater Fredericksburg um, area. And George Washington grew up across the river in Stafford County or what now is Stafford County. Um, I'll play off the goat theme from WPI there. We actually, one of my favorite traditional events on campus at Mary Washington is our spring event called Devil Goat Day. Um, depending on your class year, you're either a devil or a goat. Even years like myself were goats, odd years you're devils. Um, and it's a essentially a competition between the classes um, that think of like a big field day. That's what you got with Devil Goat Day and really awesome t-shirts that our students design each year. <laughs> awesome. Um, so our fun fact for Mary Baldwin is we are the fighting squirrels. Um, and that's not just because we have squirrels on campus. Um, we actually got the squirrel from Mary Baldwin herself. Her family crest had a big old squirrel in the middle of it. So um, that is how we are now the fighting squirrels. <laughs> Maybe we lost Chase. So Mariah, take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so RIT is, uh, our mascot is the Bengal tiger, Richie the Bengal tiger, but we didn't always have a tiger as a mascot. We used to be uh, the RIT tech men, which was a little old man kind of hunched over with a screwdriver in his hand and he wasn't very fierce or scary. So uh, back in the 1950s when our basketball team did really well, the students um, petitioned to rename our mascot and get a new mascot. So we are now the RIT Tigers. Awesome. Uh, so we go by the Hokies uh, and football is really big at Virginia Tech. Uh, a actual fact, fun fact is that um, there has been eight college football stadiums that have experienced a human made earthquake. Um, six of them have happened at Virginia Tech. I hope you find all of this stuff interesting. I love hearing about the fun facts with the school. Let's uh, take it back to be a little bit more um, college search process. Um, so what, what advice would you all give someone going through the college search process? So Tyler, if you wanna start us off yep. again on that. Um, I would say, you know, if you're just starting your process, kind of start to think about, you know, how far away from home you might want to be. Do you want to be in a city or a more rural setting? Do you want to go to a large, small, medium-sized school? 
once you've kind of narrowed it down from that, you can start to look at schools that have majors you're interested in, but I also say take advantage of all these virtual programming that schools are offering because uh, they didn't have that a year or a year and a half ago. Um, and now all these schools offer really robust programs. So I encourage you to check that out too. So I guess I'm next. Um, yep. I would say visit, visit, visit. All of our campuses are really opening up for visits again. Some of us have been open longer than others. We've been successfully doing um, campus visits again since July of 2020 um, and have done pretty well with COVID protocols in place. So as you're comfortable or as you're vaccinated, visit college campuses. We still have some regulations on group sizes. So be sure to pre-register. Don't just show up anywhere because right now, as much as we would love to probably host you to too, um, with our reduction on tour sizes and things, it's imperative that you pre-register for those visits, but go and see yourself on a college campus. That's truly the best way um, to, to see if you could be there for the next year, four years is to go and sit on a bench or, you know, observe what's happening in the dining hall. That's a good way to know if you're going to be a good fit at that college. Um, I definitely agree with Sarah on that. Definitely go and visit. Um, as someone who went through the admissions process five years ago now, um, I would say, and what I did was I made a list of what was important to me and kind of find what college checks off the most boxes um, and make sure that you find your best fit. Um, it is completely your decision. So just trust your gut and, um, you know, definitely come and tour the campus, get to know the students, and maybe contact some of the faculty members to see if that would be a good fit for you. I would say that to listen to your school counselor. Um, so many school counselors visit campuses. They've been to you know dozens, if not hundreds, of college campuses as part of their job. Uh, so they may have a school in mind for you that might be a really terrific fit that you have never heard of before. Um, so take your counselor's advice, and if they recommend that you check something out, they have your best interest in mind, in mind, and they want you to succeed. So uh, give them a listen and try something different. I, I will say, uh, just be patient, trust the process, you know, it, it takes a lot of time and effort, um, you know, to fill applications, think about your essay topics. Uh, so definitely give a lot of time, be patient with the process. Um, and just know that whatever, wherever you end up, you're going to be successful regardless. Uh, all of our institutions are very, you know, competitive and have a lot of resources to make sure that you're going to be successful in the long run. So, you know, trust the process, be patient. And regardless of where you go and end up, you're going to be successful. All great information. Thank you and advice. Thank you so much. Um, as you all know, it's a lot to fit in uh, in six minutes. Um, so these were very much college fair highlights. Um, so the conversation does not stop here. Every rep provided their contact information in the chat. Um, we will be sure to provide the questions to the reps as well. Um, so this is just the start of that conversation. Um, so we hope that you enjoyed tonight and got a lot of great information. I want to thank the, all of the reps for taking time out of their busy schedules and sharing all this great information um, to be a part of this virtual college fair. Um, so as you exit the webinar, you will be taken to a quick survey. It's only four questions, so we'd love to hear your feedback regarding this particular session. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, all of the fair sessions were recorded and will be available on the website in about a week or so, so that you will be able to view everything in an on-demand set setting, whether you want to rewatch the session you uh, already attended it or watch one that you may have missed. Um, so I hope everyone has a great evening. Take care and thanks again for being here.